the row limit clause. I put it there as my first bullet, the most elegant SQL structure ever. And this really is beautiful SQL, beautiful SQL. And it also solves some major problems. It's always been an issue with SQL to navigate through rows. It's quite simply the architecture of structured query language. You know, SQL is a set-oriented language. It deals with sets of rows. There is logically no way to navigate from row to row with the SQL language. The language just doesn't do it. If you want to navigate from row to row, you need to use a procedural language so you can proceed, such as PLSQL. So navigation from row to row, and I'm picking up here on the problem of pagination, has always been really difficult in the SQL environment. It's been difficult to code, it's been inefficient. The row limit clause solves a raft of problems in this area. So I'm just going to concentrate on pagination, uh, but I'm sure you'll be able to find many other cases where the row navigation is so difficult with traditional SQL. Now, let us take a classic problem. I'll connect to the Scott schema for this, I think. Scott still exists with 12C, no change from the earlier releases. Now, let us select ename from emp. My 14 rows that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Now I'll try some pagination. Well, maybe I want to select just the first five rows. So we use a stop key. Select ename from emp, where row name less than or equal to five. And I get Smith, Martin, Smith, Allen, Ward, Jones, Martin. And that, of course, is just the natural order that the rows happened to be encountered with the full table scan execution method. Straightforward enough. But now, that's not much use. Maybe I want to page through, get the first five employees in alphabetical order. Well, what does your junior programmer do? He comes up with this. He says, select a name from emp, where row num less than or equal to five, order by a name. And that gives him Alan Jones, Martin Smith, Ward. This is a classic bug, because of course that is not giving me the first five employees in alphabetical order. It's giving me the first random five employees and then sorting them. Because, of course, the row selection and column projection occurs before the order by. What I want, of course, is the A's and the B's and the C's. I want alphabetically the first employees. We can do that with traditional SQL. We have to do it like this with a subquery. So I run select ename from emp order by ename. So I sort all my employees. Then I wrap that in an outer query. Select star from that where row num less than or equal to five. And that gives me what I want. Adams, Allen, Blake, Clark, Ford. But it's a clumsy structure. I've had to do it with a subquery. So move on <coughs> to 12C. And this is my 12C equivalent. Select ename from emp, order by ename, fetch first five rows only. Such an intuitive piece of text, that. Such an intuitive piece of SQL. And out they pop. And that's not only going to be more comprehensible to read and easier to write, it's also almost certainly, though I'll prove this later on, uh, going to be more efficient than the subquery approach. That's pretty good, but it gets better. Let's say I now want to get the second five rows. So I'm paging through my employees five at a time. Well, my programmer has written this to get the first five rows. How does he get the next five rows? Well, I know exactly what your typical junior programmer does. He does this. He takes the existing query and then adjusts the predicate. So he takes the predicate that he had previously and modifies it. So instead of saying where row num less than five, he says where row num greater than five and row num less than or equal to ten. And huh? No rows come back. And all begins to sequel are completely thrown by this. And I'm sure that none of you will be, you know, because we all understand that what we're doing here is the projection of the columns occurs after the selection. So at select time, we don't have access to rows five to ten. So logically it's impossible to do that. 
So how do you get around that? Well, there are well-known techniques for doing that. They work, but it's pretty clumsy. This is the typical way of paging through the next five rows. You do it with one, two, three. Three queries in one. The first subquery, select ename from emp, order by ename. Exactly as we did there. Then you wrap that in another query. Select ename row num, give it an alias from that. Where row num less than or equal to 10. So now we're getting rows 1 to 10 in alphabetical order. We then have to wrap that in another query, which will jump past the first five. And that does work. I now get James, Jones, King, Martin, Miller. I'm sure you've seen or written code like that. It works, but three subqueries, that's pretty grim. Well, let's go to 12C. Select ename from AMP, order by name, offset five rows, fetch next five rows only. There we are. One of the most beautiful statements I think you're likely to come across. Well, that's all very well, but let's see what's actually happening. Now, um, I'm sure that some of you will have been thinking there's an alternative approach for doing pagination. There is. Um, I wrote just this little query. Select ename from, and I'm getting a slightly better approach here, but it's still a bit clumsy to write. What I'm going to do is use an analytic function, use analytics. So whatever release it was that this, this feature of the analytics came in, I can now do this. I can select ename from this subquery where row num between rn, rather, a uh, projected column name, between 6 and 10. And what is my subquery? Select ename row number over order by ename. So if you're familiar with analytics, you can write it like that. And it works. James Jones, King, Martin, Miller. And that is, it has to be said, that is a lot better code than the three queries, the calling query and two inner queries I had here. But you have to know your analytics. And many programmers are basically frightened of analytics. Uh, I'm a bit frightened of some of them myself, I have to admit, and don't like to use them or simply don't know the capabilities of them. But that's one way of doing pagination. Well, what I did was just a bit of experimenting. Let us set autotrace on and see what's actually going on. I'll run this statement here, my 12C statement, and see how Oracle executes it. Right, so I run that, back come the second set of five rows. And what do we see in the execution plan? Window sort pushed rank. That tells us straight away we're getting some analytics going on here. And we can see in the predicate, filter, row number, over, order by, case, that a searched case clause. So that's the rewrite Oracle has done. What happens if I run my own query? If I explicitly use analytics and we see the same thing, but of course I coded that by hand. And even the execution plan, plan hash value 329, whatever, is identical. So that allows us to reverse engineer what's actually going on. And what Oracle has done with this row limit clause is produce a really nice wrapper around some pretty complex analytics. So to conclude, there's the statement. And I think that is one of the most beautifully elegant statements you're ever likely to see in SQL. And just to finish off, why is it so nice? It's simple to use performs as well as any analytics, is not prone to error.